Hello everyone, Russ of Aquarimax here, and today we have an unboxing from Finger Lake Feeders. You can check out the Facebook page, I'll put a link in the description to that. Um, we have conducted a trade. So um, Finger Lake Feeders has isopods, isopod supplies. They also have some feeder roaches and things like that, so check them out. So, let's see. First thing here... Finger Lake Feeder Supplemental Isopod Food. Cool. It even has the ingredients on there and everything. So this was really nice to get this sample. So thank you very much. It's got some interesting uh, ingredient list there. It looks like some real nutritious stuff. So I'll be looking forward to trying that out. Thank you. Let's see what else we have in here. This feels like the first container with live goods in it here. Oh wow, very cool. And you can probably see the text there, Black Hops. So these are Porcelio Hoffman's Egg Eye, but they are a different locality than the one that's more commonly kept. Let me just grab mine for a second. I, I grabbed a few representatives of mine so I can show you what we're looking at, what the difference is here. Okay, I've had my colony for quite a while now and really we get two color variations. We get this just normal isopod gray color as you can see in this male here and then we've got this sort of more dilute color and it, it's not uh, sexual dimorphism or anything like that. You get males and females in both of these color uh, phases in the, the colony of the type that I keep. So now, let's see what we get in here. I'm going to open this actually above the enclosure they're going to go in, just for safety. I don't want to drop any. Take a look here. There's a little one. And I'm, I'm anticipating most of these are going to be pretty young at this point. But these, oh yeah, and you can already see it in some of these. Not only do they have a narrower margin, but they tend to have a darker color. And when I mean margin, I mean the skirt. The skirt tends to be narrower, but they have a darker body color, and I'm sure that will uh, be more apparent even as they grow, but you can already see it here in these individuals, so this is going to be cool. Looking forward to that, raising these up. So I'm going to put them here in the... Oh, you know what? I was going to put a piece of cork bark in there. I haven't done it yet for now since they have this uh, egg crate or egg carton. That'll probably be fine. Looks like there's a nice count of them here. And oh, some carrot for a little snack as they travel. Nice. There we go. Looks pretty clear. Excellent. Thank you. I will look forward to watching the progression of these uh, Porcelio Hoffman's egg eye. And you can see here this enclosure. I'm trying something a little bit different with ventilation. I've played with this medical, breathable medical tape before and have confirmed that, at least in my tests, that uh, fungus gnats can't get through it, but of course um, gases easily transfer through it. So I have put ventilation up along the top and along the sides, just covered in this medical tape. Of course, this is not fungus nap proof they can get in a little bit but that to to deter them to some extent we're going to be playing with that sort of ventilation see how it goes most of the spanish porcelli you need um, most of the spanish porcelio the giant many of the giant spanish porcelio species really 
do best with a lot of ventilation. Porcelia Hoffman's egg eye, according to Oren's book, are not quite as demanding as some of the others. So um, I think that will be enough there. Now, this is fun. <laughs> it was mentioned in our correspondence that uh, seeing me open packages with a pocket knife caused some cringing. So here is a safety um, box opening knife or box cutter, utility knife, whatever you want to call it. So thank you. That's awesome. I will make sure to use this in future unboxings. Like that. A little too late for this unboxing, but as you notice, I made sure to do it off camera and very carefully. <laughs> so. That is appreciated. That'd be good. And then here we have some BC maples. Excellent. Been looking forward to these. Now, BC maples, if, if you don't know, are a uh, color morph. Unlike the the black Hoffman's egg, which are a locality that occur that way in, in the wild, um, the BC maples are a morph of Oniscus ocellus. These are some wild type Oniscus ocellus. I've had this colony for a number of years now. Um, they're really a pretty underrated isopod. You know, even the wild type is pretty attractive. They get fairly large. They have these sort of metallic flecks um, on the carapace. Pretty cool isopod. And I got my original wild types from Bugs in Cyberspace quite a few years ago. But now we're going to look at what this morph looks like. Some of you have probably already seen them. But I've always thought these would be really fun to have. Now, unlike the Hoffman's egg eye, um, these do really well in just uniformly moist enclosures, but it's always good to have a moisture gradient. Ooh, there's some right there. They're so tiny. They're awesome. Wow, they're beautiful even when they're little. Here, I better get the um, container. I don't want to lose any. So I'm going to get the their culture container enclosure. Put it right here. So I can open it up over that. Okay, I think we're ready, but before we go any further, I just want to give a shout out to our supporters on Patreon for all that you do. You're amazing. You keep the channel going. And uh, what can I say? I can't do it without you. And I really appreciate the support that everyone gives in whatever form. Everything that you do to support the channel is noted and appreciated. So let's open this up. Now, BC, my understanding is it, it stands for British Columbia, and Maples is uh, a reference to the Canadian flag. This uh, species does occur in Canada. It's, it's from Europe, but it occurs in Canada now, as it does in some of the cooler and more humid parts of the United States. I can't find it in my state. It's too dry. But uh, the fact that these are, you know, almost red like the Canadian maple leaf, um, this is, is, it's a reference to that, which I think is pretty cool. Look at that color. I like that. And let's go through here and see what we can see. As you can see, I'm opening it above the uh, container because inevitably I would miss some. I see some scattering into the substrate already. There's another one right there. So cool. And like many isopods, these will It'll be easier to see the color and pattern once they get a little bigger, but those are gorgeous. Love that. That's awesome. So, made sure to give them a nice big patch of moss. I'll leave this carrot in them, in there for them to, to snack on. Put this moss over here. And I, I'd like to say this, this moss is at a perfect, uh, level of humidity. It's not totally saturated, which wouldn't necessarily be really good to ship them in, but it has enough humidity in there. Um, some people tend to overdo the humidity when shipping, and that can be a problem. So that's just about perfect right there. Well, thank you to Finger Lakes Feeders for um, sending these. I am really excited to uh, work with them. Thanks for watching today, too. I post videos every 
Tuesday and Friday, all on Aquarium and Vivarium Pets. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then click the bell icon so you don't miss my next video.